Hi everybody, I hope this video finds you well. In today's video, we're going to continue our investigation of conditional analysis. Remember, our main goal has been to understand the relationship between two categorical variables. In the previous video, we took a look at how this conditional analysis could be used to sort of understand the results of an experiment and argue whether or not one treatment was working or whether one treatment was more effective than another treatment. In this video, we're gonna look at another use of conditional analysis, which is to take a look at a statistical study and understand sort of the results or how to use the, that statistical study to make a decision. So let's get into this example here. So we're going to suppose that you work for a political agency that's advocating for additional taxes to support tourism promotion in New Mexico. So to get an idea of the current level of support for the idea, you mail out a survey to the voters across the state and ask them how supportive they are of the idea of paying additional taxes with the goal of supporting tourism in the state. You then record their response as well as the region of the state they live in. So you get the following data. We give them the option of saying that they support the idea, are neutral about the idea, or do not support the idea. And we classify the region that they live in as either in northern New Mexico, central New Mexico, or southern New Mexico. So what kind of data do we actually get here? Well, you can see that this has been organized in a two-way table for us. And again, remember that the way we should sort of read a two-way table is some of these values mean that there were 40 voters in our sample who said that they were from northern New Mexico and supported the idea of these additional taxes. Whereas, uh, for example, there were four voters in our study who were from southern New Mexico and reported that they were neutral about these additional taxes. That's what each of these sort of nine different values in the two-way table represent. So we're going to do a bunch of stuff uh, with this data here. We're going to answer a couple questions like which region appeared the most frequently in your sample. That might tell us uh, which region had like the most potential voters. So we want to know which one showed up the most frequently. We'll answer through like B through D here uh, some percentage questions like what percentage of the voters in your study were from southern New Mexico and were neutral about the additional taxes, so on and so forth. Then in part E here, we'll construct the conditional distribution based on region. So we'll treat the region they live in as the explanatory variable. In other words, we'll try to see if the region that they live in somehow might impact whether or not they're supportive, neutral, or not supportive of these additional taxes. We'll answer a couple questions based on the conditional distribution here. And then we'll get to sort of the real crux of all this, which is using this information if we were going to create an advertising campaign supporting these additional taxes, which region should we target? In other words, should we try to focus those advertisements on northern New Mexican voters, central New Mexican voters, or southern New Mexican voters? And we'll use our data to make that decision. All right, so to give ourselves a little bit of room, let's go on to the next page where we'll have this data and we'll work through each of these questions. So there is our two-way table. As we know, before we even get to any of the questions here, we want to add in all the totals. That means the row totals, column totals, and ultimately the table total. So let's go ahead and get the row totals first. So we'll do 40 plus 46 plus 15. Uh, looks like we should have 101 there. So that tells us that there were 101 voters who said that they supported these additional taxes. 19 plus 56 plus 4 gives us 79 voters were neutral about these taxes. And 4 plus 13 plus 20 uh, was 37, meaning there were 37 voters who were not supportive of this issue. Uh, we also want to get the sort of column total. So let's do that, 40 plus 19 plus four. So there were 63 vo voters who were from Northern New Mexico, 46 plus 56 plus 13, 115 voters from Central New Mexico, and 15 plus four plus 20, uh, 39 voters from Southern New Mexico. Then we can add up either all of these row totals or all of these column totals. Either way, we have to get the same value. If we do that, we should get 217. So we had 217 individuals in our sample, or in other words, we t interviewed or surveyed 217 uh, New Mexican voters. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these questions. For part A, we just wanted to know which region appeared the most frequently in your sample. So most frequently just means the highest frequency. So if we look here, we're looking at each of the regions. We can see that central New Mexico had 115 voters, way more than northern New Mexico with only 63 and southern New Mexico with 39. So we'd say central New Mexico with 115 voters. 
what does that indicate in terms of like understanding the study? Well, this tells us that probably central New Mexico has the highest uh, density in terms of population, has the most voters. Uh, it, it could theoretically just be from like uh, who decided to respond. But if the survey was done by sending out a lot of surveys from across the state and you're getting a lot of responses from this region, that probably means that there's more voters that live in that region than there are in these other regions. All right, let's take a look at B. So for B, we want what percentage of voters in your study were from southern New Mexico and were neutral about the additional taxes. Keep in mind, like we discussed in the previous video, since it says what percentage of voters in your study, we know that the denominator of our expression is going to be uh, all the voters in the study overall, the sample size. So we know that this in the denominator is going to be that 217. What trait are they supposed to have? Well, they're supposed to be from Southern New Mexico and they were supposed to be neutral. So they have to have both of these traits, Southern New Mexico voter and neutral. So if we look here, all the Southern New Mexico voters are here, all the neutral voters are there, intersecting those two. Seems like there were only four people that shared those two traits. So we would have that, we can go ahead and use a nice color for that, uh, only four shared those traits. So we'd have 4 out of 217. We can go ahead and do that on our calculator, 4 divided by 217, and we should get that that comes out as approximately, after converting to a percentage, as 1.8%. So only 1.8% of the voters that we uh, surveyed were people who were from southern New Mexico and said that they were neutral. Obviously there were more voters from southern New Mexico overall and more voters who were neutral, but only 1.8% of them had both of the traits of being from southern New Mexico and being neutral. All right, well, let's go ahead and look at C. For C, uh, we again want what percentage of voters in your study. So we're going to have the same denominator. So it's going to be out of that 217 again. So we're using that each time. All right, and then what about the numerator? Well, they were supposed to either be supported or were neutral. So we want to combine all the people who supported and all the people who were neutral. If we go back and we do that here, uh, we can go ahead and use, say, like a green here. Well, all the people who supported were right here, that 101, and all the people who were neutral were right there. We know that, generally speaking, when we see or, we need to add these together, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to say we don't care if they said they supported or if they were neutral. We're just going to combine those together. So that'll be 101 plus 79. Uh, which looks like it should give us 180 over 217. And if we look at that, 180 divided by 217, and then we convert that as a percentage, it looks like we should get 82.9%. So 82.9%, close to 83% of our sample, either we're saying that they were supportive of this, these additional taxes or were neutral about the idea. Of course, that's a good sign if your agency is advocating for this because this means the large sort of majority of the voters, at least that you surveyed, are at least uh, neutral or better about this issue. So it doesn't mean you have a ton, a ton of opposition. It doesn't necessarily mean you also have a ton of support, right? Because we put support in neutral together, but at least it's not a bad sign, right? If we had found that that only like 10% of people were supportive or neutral, that means like 90% are against the idea. That would be a bad sign for getting these additional taxes passed. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at D. Uh, D is the last one, sort of about a percentage of voters in your study. So once again, we know that our denominator is going to be out of 217 but a little bit trickier with our sort of numerator here. We wanted the people who either supported the additional taxes or were from northern New Mexico. So they either have to have supported or just simply be from northern New Mexico. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Remember, we're looking for people who supported or were from northern New Mexico. Well, the people who supported, uh, we can go ahead and maybe do that in purple. The people who supported are right here. It's all of those people. So we know that that's going to be that 101. But we also said we would be okay. We're trying to count up the people who were from northern New Mexico, which would be these people here. Now, you might say, can we just go ahead and add that 101 and that 63? Well, we have to be careful because notice that the way that we got that 101 includes the 40 people from northern New Mexico. But the, those 40 people were also counted when we got the 63 people from northern New Mexico. So if we add these two together, we'll be double counting those 40 people who were both from northern New Mexico and supported. 
So to avoid that, we need to remove that double counting. In other words, we can get our numerator as 101 plus the 63 minus the 40. If we subtract that 40, then we'll be subtracting them once, meaning they will no longer be double counted. If you don't like the way of doing that, instead you can do it manually and say, let's take 40 plus 46 plus 15 plus 19 plus 4 and just add those five values together and you'll get the same thing. Either way, the numerator here should be 101 plus 63 minus 40. It looks like our numerator should be 124 out of 217. And then if we go ahead and do that as a percentage, it looks like we should get approximately 57.1%. So this is sort of introduces an important thing that we're going to be discussing more and more about as we go further, especially as we start our investigation of probability, which is our next major topic. As we've discussed, or like in C and D, usually means addition. But whenever you add things, you have to be very careful about double counting. In this one, there was no worries about double counting because people either said support or they said neutral. You couldn't say both. So there was no chance of double counting a person. But here, it was very possible for people to be both from northern New Mexico and to say that they support it. So we had to be very careful about not double counting that 40. Again, we did it at sort of a higher level by going ahead and taking all the people who supported all the northern New Mexicans, then realizing that these people had been double counted. So we removed that minus 40. If you don't like that again, you could go ahead and just do it manually by taking 40, 46, and 15 then 19 and 4, and that would be everybody who is either from northern New Mexico or supported or was both. Okay, let's go ahead, and I believe now we are ready to move to our conditional distribution, but notice that we want to do the conditional distribution here. Uh, we'll use, uh, we can go ahead and yeah, we can just underline here uh, based on region. So notice that that's telling us that we want to use the region as the explanatory variable. So let's go ahead and see how to do that. For E, we want the conditional based on region. So where was region located? Well, each region was in its own column. So we're going to divide by the column totals. So remember, whenever you're going to build a conditional distribution, you're always dividing by the row or the column totals. In this case, right, since the explanatory variable was a region and region was located in each column, we'll be dividing by the column totals. So let's recreate our chart. There's support, neutral, and do not support. And then we have uh, Northern New Mexico, NNM, CNM for Central New Mexico, and Southern New Mexico. So we'll go ahead and recreate the chart here. All right, so to fill in these values, what do we need to do? Well, we'll take 40, 19, and four, and all divide each of those by 63. So 40 divided by 63, we should get 63.5, so 63.5%. Then 19 divided by 63, we should get 30.2%. And then finally, 4 divided by 63, uh, we get 6.3%. For central New Mexico, we'll now be dividing by the column total of 115. So 46 divided by 115, that's 40%. Then 56 divided by 115, that's 48.7%. And then finally, 13 divided by 115, it looks like we get 11.3%. All right, for Southern New Mexico, we'll divide everything by 39. So 15 divided by 39, uh, we should get 38.5%. Uh, four divided by 39 should be 10.3%. And then finally, 20 divided by 39, looks like we should get 51 percent and of course, each of these sets of percentages adds up to 100% because it's, this is how the support levels were distributed in each region. So again, remember what these sort of mean. We're saying that 63.5% of the people from northern New Mexico said that they supported, or 11.3% of the people from central New Mexico said that they did not support. So this is telling us the levels of support in each region. 
All right, we have some follow-up questions that we wanted to do from this. Uh, so for part F, we wanted to know which region had the highest rate of neutral voters, and we want to say what was that rate. So let's go ahead and take a look. We're looking for the highest rate of neutral voters. In northern New Mexico is 30.2, central New Mexico is 48.7, and southern New Mexico is 10.3. So it would be central New Mexico with 48.7%. In other words, just under half of all the central New Mexican voters said that they were neutral, whereas only 30% of northern New Mexico and very few of the southern New Mexican, to only 10% said that they were neutral. So it is definitely central New Mexico. Central New Mexico by far with 48.7. All right, let's go ahead and look at G. For G, we want to know which region had the lowest rate of do not support. What was that rate? So we're looking for the lowest rate of do not support. So for do not support, it looks like here it was 6.3, 11.3, and 51.3. So this would, it would be northern New Mexico. Uh, just by a little bit in front of central New Mexico and then southern New Mexico way, way higher uh, with 6.3%. So in other words, what we basically found is that the central New Mexican voters were the most neutral and the northern New Mexican voters were the least likely to be against the idea. All right, now we're ready to go ahead and make our decision. So Remember, in Part H, what our goal is, is we are working for a group that supports these additional taxes, and we're going to you, try to create an advertising campaign that is going to be ran in either northern, central, or southern New Mexico, and we need to choose which region to focus on. All right, so let's think about what would be a good one to do. Well, if we look at this information, let's first think about what is sort of a good, what, what, what sort of thing are we looking for in a good region? You might say we're a good region, since we're in support of these taxes, is one that supports us, right? So maybe we'd want to focus on northern New Mexico with the highest rate of support. But if you think about it, a place that already supports you doesn't really need advertising. If this region is already strongly supportive of you, you don't really need to advertise to them. So you might instead be looking for a place that doesn't already support you as much. So central New Mexico and southern New Mexico might be good ideas. All right, should we then focus on central New Mexico or southern New Mexico? Well, you'll notice that central New Mexico is very, uh, has a very high rate of neutrality, whereas southern New Mexico has a very high rate of do not support. Well, what is going to be easier to sway? Is it easier to sway people who are neutral or easier to sway people to sway people who are against you? Well, we probably all know it's much easier to sway people who are neutral. So we might want to focus on the group that has the highest percentage of neutral voters, meaning there's basically the most people to convince. There's one other region, reason why central New Mexico is also a good choice, and it goes back to our original sort of question here. Remember, central New Mexico is also got the most amount of voters. It had the highest frequency in our analysis. So not only are they the people there pretty neutral or have the highest rate of neutrality, there's also the highest frequency of them. So that would indicate to us that central New Mexico is probably our right choice. We should choose central New Mexico since it had highest rate of neutrality and uh, we can make a little note there, highest rate of neutrality, which means easier to sway. And it was the most frequent, meaning potentially more voters. So for these two reasons, that it had the highest rate of neutrality and it was the most frequent to show up in our survey, it, that means that there's potentially more voters that live in that region. So having a ad campaign that targets that region is probably gonna reach more people. Again, you should sort of see that central New Mexico is definitely the right choice. Northern New Mexico, uh, the big problem there is that a lot of the people already support you. So I mean, you'll get good responses to your advertisements, 
but they already support you, so are you really gaining much? And of course, southern New Mexico, the real downside there is that a lot of people are already strongly against the idea. It might be hard to convince them. And also, even if you do convince them, keep in mind that that was by far the least frequent region, meaning there probably doesn't, it probably doesn't have as many voters as the other regions. So even if you work really hard to convince them, are you really gaining enough voters to really change the whole sway of this legislation of this election? So this was an example of you know, doing some of our sort of basic uh, marginal analysis here, calculating different percentages, making sure that you understand, again, how to build the conditional distribution. This time we were basing it on regions, so we divided by column totals because that's where it was located, making sure we analyze parts of the conditional distribution, and then the really important part, making a decision from that. This pretty much wraps up our discussion of conditional analysis. In the next video, we'll look at one sort of interesting thing that can happen when doing conditional analysis, especially if they're sort of a lurking or confounding variable, and then we'll be ready to move into our discussion of probability.